Steve here, hope you're doing well. In this video I want to show you how we can uh, hold a chord and tap at the same time, like I did in the intro. So let's get into it. I'm in standard tuning for this video and I want to keep things simple uh, so it's easy for you to follow along and you're not getting bogged down with you know too much information at once. So that way you can follow along quite easily I hope. So let's just use two chords for this video as um, a kind of an introduction and get you on your way. Uh, both the chords are going to start from the uh, lovely A string here and the two chords will be a major 9 and a minor 9 chord uh, which both sound like this. So major 9 <laughs> minor 9 so you may be able to hear there how they have that already that kind of characteristic sound of like you know like mafi emo kind of style of music right and um, much like the chord that I used in the intro um, that one's also a, another major major 9 there as well but just a different uh, version of it so let's start with the e major 9 chord and let's play an E major 9 on the A string on the uh, 7th fret. Uh, I'll have that on screen for you. So let's take a look at what notes we can use to make some kind of magical tapping riff. Um, so the black notes on this chart here, the solid black notes, are the chord, them, the chord itself, the um, E major 9. And on the hollowed out black notes, these are going to be the notes we can use for tapping. And this is basically notes taken from uh, E major scale. So what you can do first is familiarize yourself with the scale by playing through it. The next thing you can do is tap through each note individually. While you do that, I want you to pay attention to what notes that uh, sound good to you, which notes you think you want to end up using. Uh, this will help when it comes later to constructing an idea. So the next thing that I would do is try and find notes that sound the strongest along with this uh, E major 9 chord here. And in music theory terms, that's usually the 1, 3 and 5 of um, a particular chord. So in E major, that's going to be the E. G sharp and B. So what I've done is put these notes on the chart for you to help you out and these time, this time they are the hollowed out red notes. So let's see how they sound. So already there you might hear how they sound quite pleasing, they sound quite um, you know, nice along with the chord right. As I said because the, the 1 and the 3 and the 5 are in the E major chords so that's why they sound the strongest. So what I'll usually do is I'll think, you know, when I make um, some kind of idea, I'll try and include some of those notes to try and make my riff quite, you know, pleasing and, uh, you know, it sticks and it's not really that uh, erratic and it's pleasing to listen to that way, right? But, of course, you don't have to do any of that, um, you know, one definition of math rock is to do the complete opposite of that, so I wouldn't blame you if you do. So the next thing I'll usually do is find two notes that I can tap together at the same time. <laughs> Sounds like Terry Mellis, right? <laughs> Yeah, and usually um, what I'll do is have a strings gap in between the taps that I do. We don't have to do that. Um, it can sound perfectly good if you have two strings together like that at the same time as well. And then the next step I'll take is look for some you know slides I can use as well. Um, you know, there's not many techniques that we can use as we're only using our tapping hand. So sliding and um, tapping at the same time with two fingers is a useful uh, technique that we can use to try and fill out the sound. Just look for little slides like that and which slides you think sound quite nice. I remember launching from those um, those uh, red notes will help you as well, the stronger notes. Mm -hmm. 
So now the next step would be the uh, the hardest step is actually um, using all of this information that we have. So our knowledge of the uh, the scale itself, and we've started to build up this uh, you know, implicit uh, knowledge of what notes sound good. So we can start to use that when we craft our ideas. And um, it's a lot of hard work, but um, you know that effort pays off when you come up with some uh, cool idea afterwards. So it's going to be a lot of trial and error. tapping first for example to mention that uh, the tapping technique I'm using here I'm uh, holding a pick and I'm using my middle and my ring finger for tapping so I guess uh, the speed of sound uh, is C water whatever they call it riff something like that <laughs> the sound the speed of sound in C water that's the one yeah uh, they're a great band by the way uh, yes, yeah, so I'm using those two fingers uh, because I like to hybrid pick, meaning using a pick and my fingers at the same time. I learned to develop these two fingers for tapping. It's also fine just to use your you know, pick, uh, just your fingers. to do something like that basically. Oh, and also I'm using a uh, compressor on the, the pedal board here uh, so that evens out the volumes a bit and it kind of I mean, it, uh, gives more definition to the tapping as well. I did do a video on how to use uh, the compressor with some tapping as well if you want to check that one out. So, E major 9, goodbye. Let's move on to the minor 9 version. So let's play minor 9. So we're going to start from the 7th fret there. And I have the chart up on the screen for you, so remember these uh, black notes are the chord, and then the hollowed out notes are going to be the scale. So again, play the chord, and then run through the scale. Uh, to help familiarise yourself with the shape, and then again, tap it single notes. And then the next step again would be to learn where the 1, 3 and 5 are, the strongest notes. So again, I've put them on the chart for you. So they sound like this. And you can hear how they really complement the chord, right? Those, uh, those certain notes there. So I really like them. So again, try and include them in your idea. Um, you don't have to include all of them, of course, just uh, some of them. So remember, uh, find the notes that you like, so you want to use them. And then two notes at the same time again, with the tapping. Some of them sound better than others there, right? <laughs> and find out where the good slides are. Again, that's just a lot of trial of error of just messing around like that, sliding up and sliding down and you know tapping at the same time, you know. So you can come up with some really cool ideas that way. And then the last step again would be to start, you know, crafting your idea. You know, you've built up this knowledge of this scale and what starts to sound good. Uh, that will really help you, uh, you know, bridge that gap of being unsure of what to do. And then the last thing you would uh, need to do is start to practice moving between the major 9 and the minor 9 chord. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you a quick demo of that. something just off the top of my head um, you know that would be the next step to take and then of course after you've uh, you know become 
the legend of learning these two chords and tapping this scale, then you can start to move it to uh, you know other chords and then start to move it you know to the E string and then start from the D string and things like this. Um, so let's leave it there. I uh, hope you find this lesson very useful and it gets you on your way to creating some kind of cool little tapping riffs. Uh, so if you do come up with something um, and you do record it, so please send it me. I always like to see what you guys are up to. And if you have any questions, then leave them down below in the comments. And also, uh, all of the materials that you see in this lesson will be over on my website. Again, I'll throw a link for that in the description or perhaps I'll put it in a comment for you. Uh, as always, um, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.